Today we're going to explore the origins of one of rock and roll's coolest and most interesting guitars. The guitar in question is Kurt Cobain's mid-60s heavily modified Fender Jaguar. This guitar has a mysterious history that has remained an unsolved mystery for years after the end of Nirvana. Considering how famous this guitar is, why hasn't anyone come forward to claim prior ownership? Mysterious. This is what we're going to explore today. Let's begin. The Fender Jaguar debuted in 1962 as a high-end model costing $379.50 or $3,382 in 2021, making it the most expensive guitar in Fender's lineup at the time. The Jaguar differed from the Jazzmaster, which was released in 1958, in that the Jaguar had a shorter scale of 24 inches, as opposed to the standard Fender 25 and a half inch scale length, 22 frets as opposed to the traditional 21, and different pickups and switching. Both guitars had an offset design, floating tremolo system, and a dual rhythm lead circuit. The Jaguar became popular initially among surf guitar players in the early 1960s, and later with indie, grunge, and so-called alt-rock players, including Johnny Marr of the Smiths, John Frusciante of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. In 1964, CBS bought Fender and made some changes pertinent to our exploration today. Uh. Notably, during the CBS era, the Jaguar changed from clay dot inlays on the guitar's fretboard to purloid in 1965. From 1964 to 66, the Jaguar saw a number of changes in the form of Cluson style tuners, added binding to the neck, and by late 1966, Fender had switched from dot inlays to block inlays. There was also a new Fender logo on the headstock, which is now referred to as the Transition logo, because it came between the original Spaghetti logo and the CBS thicker black logo adopted in 1967. This is important to remember because of what we'll learn about Kurt's Jaguar. The mid-60s Sunburst Jaguar is probably the most recognizable guitar Kurt played. Although the blue Fender Mustang with the matching headstock from the Smells Like Teen Spirit music video is a contender, as is the black Fender Stratocaster with the sticker that reads, Vandalism. Beautiful as a rock in a cop's face. The sticker came with the album Teachers in Space by the Arizona punk band called The Feeders. A lot of Kurt's guitars got smashed at shows, probably because they weren't special enough for him to hold on to. The Vandalism Strat was one such victim, ultimately. Ernie Bailey, Kurt's guitar tech, had this to say, quote, It seemed like when he first got the Jaguar, he used it as a backup. He was mainly playing the black vandalism strat around that time. And then the vandalism strat got smashed in France. It was destroyed at that point. And then the Jaguar moved into the number one slot. End quote. According to Kurt, quote, I own a 66 Jaguar. That's the guitar I polish and baby. I refuse to let anyone touch it when I jump into the crowd. <laughs> Lately, I've been using a strat live because I don't want to ruin my Mustang yet. I like to use Japanese strats because they're a bit cheaper and the frets are smaller than the American versions." End quote. Even though he says that, he did bash up the Jag if you watch the Lithium video. I think it's also the guitar he used to smack the bouncer in Dallas. Kurt is said to have bought the Jaguar from the LA Recycler newspaper in 1991 from an unknown party. His guitar tech, Ernie Bailey, said, quote, I think he just liked the lines of the Jaguar. And I think he just liked the whole California surf thing and the history that went along with Fender guitars." End quote. When Kurt bought the guitar, it already had a number of modifications done to it by one or more previous owners. Because there's debate about which year it actually was, according to Kurt it was 66, Fender says it's 65, so I'm going to show you specs from both years. Let's start with the pickups. The original single coil pickups were replaced by DiMarzio humbuckers. Next, let's talk about the knobs. The stock knobs would have been two black plastic knobs. What you can see here is that Kurt's guitar has three knurled chrome knobs. One of them is an extra volume pot that was added. Then we see the toggle switch, as opposed to the little mini black sliders. 
Then the bridge, we've got the Fender Bridge versus the Black Chrome Godot Bridge. Now we gotta talk about the neck. This one's complicated and we'll get into details in a bit, but Kurt's Jag has a bound neck with dot inlays and a Strat-sized headstock with the Fender Spaghetti logo versus an original 1965 or 66, which would look like these here. That's depending upon the year it was made, which is still in question. Then there are the tuners, from Fender tuners to Goto tuners. And Kurt's guitar came with a heavy duty anvil flight case that professional guitar players use because of all the traveling they do. If you're not a guitar player, none of these are standard modifications to the Jaguar that you see pre-Nirvana, really. It was only after guitar players got a glimpse of Kurt's Jaguar that so many have picked up offset guitars and swap the pickups to humbuckers. Because of Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, Fender, whether they admit it or not, offers a variety of factory modded Jaguars with humbuckers, simpler switching, and Gibson-style tunematic bridges. By all accounts, the only mod that Kurt did himself was to add some tape over the pickup selector toggle and top selector switches in order to avoid accidental toggles while playing. For non-guitar players, this is because switching between pickups changes how your guitar sounds in a noticeable way, and he had a particular way that he wanted it to sound. Kurt favored the bridge position on his guitars generally, and this modification was most likely to keep the Jaguar on the bridge pickup. So we've got the backstory of how Kurt acquired the guitar and what was modified on it. The only question remaining is who owned the guitar before Kurt did? Thanks to some internet sleuthing, in 2014, a man named Blazer on a guitar forum called TDPRI saw a video of a concert titled Cliff Richard at Chichester from 1980. I'm gonna save you the time and show you some stills and some video minus the audio. Cliff's music is contemporary Christian. And if you're watching this, that's probably not your thing. But hey, to each their own. The man playing the guitar is none other than Martin Jenner. Work hard, Marty! Professional touring musician with Cliff Richard and the Everly Brothers. You know, if you had pulled Kurt aside after he got the Jag and he was really into it and it was his number one guitar, then you showed him this video, he'd probably laugh at how hilarious the whole scene is but unfortunately, we will never get to know that. You can clearly see in the video that this guitar has the same pickups, knobs, and selector switch. You may have also noticed something that's not quite right. There's still some doubt, because even though here's video evidence of a man playing a left-handed, sunburst, heavily modified Fender Jaguar guitar, the neck has block inlays, instead of the period correct, according to 1965 specs, dot inlays, and the headstock is larger than Kurt's. This could, of course, mean that someone replaced the neck twice. If Fender is correct and the guitar is from 1965 instead of 66, like Kurt claimed, then it would have had dot inlays, not block inlays like Martin Jenner's. So Jenner or a previous owner swapped out the original neck if it's from 1965, now, if the guitar is from late 1966, because that's when they switched from dots to block inlays, there will be a quiz, then that's a different story. Now, the Fender logo on Kurt's headstock is the spaghetti style, which we discussed earlier, and was the original logo, and it was never used on factory Jaguars, at least not during the years in question. In fact, Fender launched the new transition logo with the Jaguar in 1962. I couldn't figure out what logo is on Martin Jenner's guitar because the video is such low resolution. Also, Kurt's Jag is a 24 inch scale length, which is how they were made in the mid 1960s. But the headstock looks like that of a Stratocaster, which has a 25 and a half inch scale length. And yet it's not a Strat neck bolted onto a Jaguar body. So what is this third and final neck on that Jag, or at least second and final neck on that Jag? There's still some mystery at this point. 
I saw you with the box. What was in the box? And with no one coming forward, we may never know for sure, which is really frustrating. So basically, Kurt's neck with the Strat headstock and spaghetti logo and dot inlays that's bound is either something that was custom made, custom ordered, you know, by a previous owner, or heavily modified by one of the owners. According to Justin Norville, who works at Fender, quote, one of the things people were thinking was that it was a non-original neck with some kind of knockoff decal. I would say that from looking at it, it appears to be correct and original. The binding and purloy dots are both period correct to 65, but I think a left-handed 24-inch scale jag neck was kind of an odd request back then. So it's just one of those oddities that came out of the factory that wasn't quite right, end quote. The question though, is what guitar that neck was attached to. We know that Martin's neck at least appears to be correct for a late 1966 Jaguar, so where did Kurtz come from? Nirvana's guitar tech Ernie Bailey did change the DiMarzio Super Distortion bridge pickup to a Seymour Duncan JB around the in utero era. It's really hard to find if Kurt recorded with the guitar like that with the new pickup or the old pickup, we don't really know. And also, you know, on the In Utero tour, I don't remember seeing it so much. It was a lot of Mustangs and who knows. If you watch the music video for Doll Parts by Hole, the guitar player is playing Kurt's Jaguar right-handed, AKA upside down in this case, and it's got a black bridge pickup, which is probably that Seymour Duncan. In 2014, Chris Novoselic, Nirvana's bass player, tweeted about the guitar, quote, We bought a guitar like that from a professional musician in the San Fernando Valley. Makes sense that this is the same axe. Notice how he doesn't mention a name for this, quote, professional musician, end quote. I mean, it probably was Martin, but who really knows at this point? I couldn't find anything official about the current location of the famous Jaguar. Many on the internet speculate that either whole guitarist Eric Erlinson still has it, others think Courtney Love or Francis Bean Cobain. I reached out to Courtney Love and she told me to f off. At the time of this recording, neither Francis Bean or Eric Erlinson have responded to my inquiries. Fender's Justin Norville was allegedly given access to inspect the guitar personally but it was from a private owner and no details about who that owner is are available online that I can find. If you found that information, please put it in the comments, I'd love to know. In 2011, Fender released a Kurt Cobain signature Jaguar in both left and right-handed, which is great, and in a new old stock, meaning like, a, you know, it looks like a new version of the guitar, and then a road-worn version, uh, which is attempting to replicate the damage done to the guitar over the years. Most of it probably by Kurt, let's be honest. What's most strange is that no one has come forward to claim prior ownership of the guitar. Martin Jenner, the guitar player who most likely sold the guitar to Kurt, moved to Australia in the late 1980s and died of cancer shortly thereafter. Well, there you have it. The true history of Kurt Cobain's legendary Fender Jaguar. Thanks for watching and have a great day.